So this is my electric bicycle. It is a Rad Rover from Rad Power Bikes. When I first bought it, it was 1,500 US dollars, and I bought it to be a full car replacement. No more gas, no more car insurance, just an electric bicycle. Rad Power Bikes is one of the most successful and prominent manufacturers of electric bicycles in all of North America. And until somewhat recently, pretty much all of Rad Power Bikes' batteries were the same as the one I have in my bike to this day. Like any other part in any other machine, things break eventually, and that's exactly what happened to my battery. Nothing chemically though. Only the plastic shell surrounding my battery broke, and so I reached out to Rad Power Bikes. Now, I knew the answer before I even asked the question, but I wanted to see if there was an option for Rad to repair the battery or send me a replacement plastic shell so I didn't have to throw away this expensive thing of lithium. Yeah, they essentially told me to screw off and buy a $500 replacement battery despite mine being 99% still working and only having a bit of plastic be the problem. So as someone who likes making things and someone who loves reusing, reducing, and recycling things as much as possible, I did exactly what you would expect me to, which is stare them dead in the eyes and say, fine, I'll do it myself. So here's what I did. The first thing I did was actually consider whether or not what I was doing was actually worth it. You see, this had not been the first time we had had a battery break in this way before. My fiance's battery actually developed a crack in a similar way as mine, and what we did was research Rad Power Bikes' battery shell and realize that it's actually something called a high long battery. For something like 40 to 50 bucks, you could essentially get all the replacement plastics you would need to do the same thing that I'm trying to achieve right here. But my idea was that it's more sustainable to be able to 3D print something in your own home without it being shipped across the entire planet just to get to you. And technically in this case, and only just barely technically, it is cheaper to buy a roll of PETG and print it than it is to buy this and have it shipped across the planet to you. But in pursuit of full transparency, I really just wanted a complicated 3D modeling project that would be a bit spiteful in the face of people that are against right to repair. So this is how I designed my open source e-bike battery shell that is compatible with Rad Power Bikes and mostly a parody of a high long design with some pretty meaningful tweaks that make it a lot more appropriate for being 3D printed and also a bit more structurally sound based on that manufacturing process. So the process of actually getting this 3D modeled was pretty straightforward. I really wanted to make something that was essentially a drop-in replacement for anyone with this type of battery shell. So most of it was just spent with the calipers trying to get things as accurate as possible and then realizing slowly that I'd have to make some certain changes that make this a lot more easily 3D printable. So that way, you know, I wasn't just directly copying the design because I totally am in a lot of ways because I'm trying to make a drop-in replacement. But ultimately, I do want this to be something that people could do what I did, and I'll show you in a bit, which is just 3D print this at home and completely repair a broken battery shell without having to spend $500 on a new part or ship a part across the entire world on some cargo ship just to get that thing done. And obviously, once this is done, I will have this posted to Thingiverse. Check out the description below for a link to that, and you can try doing this yourself. This was my first revision. I realized as I continued designing that I would have to make this shell in two parts, and I really wanted to minimize the number of separate parts that you would have to print, so this would be more accessible and easier for people to make. Now, the idea was to just prove that I could print this at all, and that's what this first PLA version of this was. But after many revisions, I believe five rounds of printing, testing, and resizing total, I came upon the design that you're seeing here. And each time that I assemble uh, a test just to see how well things fit, there's a fair bit of post-processing that's involved because 3D printing oftentimes requires supports, which are little plastic structures you have to pop off. And frankly, my 3D printer is just not tuned particularly well. I print with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, so the prints are faster, and I really just kind of run and gun it half the time. So I have a lot of shaving and cleaning up to do regularly each time that I finish up one of these revisions. But this is my final revision. This is the final assembly that I will use to actually make my first working prototype. And then comes the most arduous part. This is when I need to re-solder some of the connections I disconnected while disassembling it. 
as well as finish in putting the actual uh, female and male pins that'll connect to the e-bike's mount. Um, this involved a lot of going back and forth about wire gauge in my head, making sure that I choose the appropriate wire gauge so that way I don't, you know, start a fire or anything. And uh, I ended up using a mix of like 10 gauge and 14 gauge wire that I had lying around because I was being cheap this day, which was kind of dumb. And then comes the best part, which is finally testing it. But before that, I'd like to take a second and ask if you aren't subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you would do that for me. Um, apparently 95% of you are not subscribed, so it would be very cool if, if more of you did, because I would love to continue making videos like these working towards the future, and it's great encouragement for me. So, thanks. Alright, let's see if this thing works. It's still a working prototype at best, but I do have these designs linked down below at thingiverse.com, so if you want to try making this yourself, go ahead. I accept no liability for what happens, but this is what you do when companies don't give you access to the ability to repair things. Just do it yourself and screw them for it. 